In 2003, I was a personal trainer working in Scarsdale, New York, driving about an hour a day in my little blue Ford Escort in order to earn about $350 a week, maybe less. Uh, but it was a dream job for me because I was doing exactly what I wanted to do, which was to work with athletes, strength and conditioning. I had been married for about a year at that time, and my wife had gotten a job at my former middle school, Baldwin Middle School in Long Island, uh, as a seventh grade science teacher. And as a result, she was earning about twice as much money as I was. And she also had the health benefits, dental benefits, and just an overall more stable financial and career situation than I did as a freelancer personal trainer. Well, about a year after that, we discovered that she was pregnant and we were going to have our first baby and we wanted to raise our family, start our new family in a nice home in a nice neighborhood. In fact, it was about a block away from where I grew up in Baldwin. And we had taken our life savings, she and I, and you know whatever we had saved up from our wedding and put a down payment on this house. We put a down payment on a house that we wanted to live in. And it, about that same time, I had also discovered alternative healing, alternative lifestyles, holistic lifestyle, living, nutrition. You know, I was into health and fitness as a strength coach, so I was finding a lot of brand new information about how to live in a healthy way online, right? The internet was pretty brand new at the time. And I find websites like Mercola.com, right? And, and websites that would just propose different ways of living. And one of the things that uh, I had come across is this idea that it may in fact be better for your children to be raised and educated at home with their parents. I know. But this was total counterculture at the time. You know, uh, my mom worked, my parents worked, uh, we went to school. And it was the same thing with Colleen, it was the same thing with all the kids in our neighborhood. We didn't have any family or friends that, uh, that kept their, the primary caretaker, the mother, home with the children. Uh, so when I proposed this, it was like, are you out of your mind? Like, what is this? How do you do that? And why would you do that? And it was sort of like a tough decision to make between Colleen and I. It was like, okay, well, you earn way more money than I do. Um, and we just put a down payment on a house. And we're going to have a mortgage to pay. And we just found out we were pregnant. And if you're going to stay home, that means we're going to lose $10,000. And you're going to have to go back to work shortly after the baby's born. And we're like contemplating this, we're, we're praying over it, thinking about it, and talking about it. And we came to the conclusion you know, in, in 2003 that it would be better for our family to keep her at home. And this was quite a stretch. It meant that we had to move back or stay uh, in her father's basement, right? So we weren't going to move into our new house. But the decision to keep her home would mean that my daughter would have a primary caretaker, which is her mother, uh, caring for her rather than sending her off to day school. I mean, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine sending my newborn daughter out to daycare so that my wife could go and teach other people's children, right? Like, so I'm going to outsource the caring and teaching of my baby so that my wife can go and care and teach other people's kids. And so we decided that it was just a bad idea. So we decided to stay home. We decided to keep her home. And we decided that we were going to be a, uh, an alternative, we're going to live sort of an alternative family lifestyle. And like I said, it was totally counterculture at the time. Most people wouldn't even fathom this. It was like, you know, people were, a lot of our family and friends were like, that's really weird. Why would you do that? Well, anyway, it was the best decision that we ever made. And we went on to move down to Florida, right? Lived with my parents for a little while. I was working as a personal trainer in St. Pete. Uh, child number two, child number three, child number four came. And throughout all this time, I had been doing the best that I could in order to bring home the bacon. And there were some tough times. We had to go on food stamps at one point, um, which really required that I humble myself and like squash my pride and realize that like sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need help and I needed help. Colleen would, she took a, a small, like a, a, just a Sunday job at our church. So she was doing daycare there. And for many, many years, it was quite a struggle, but it was the best, like I said, it was the best decision that we ever made because our children had their mother. And I would work, I'd work my face off at strength camp. This is, you know, shortly after I moved my gym out of the park into a 
dirty, dingy little warehouse gym in South St. Pete, Florida. And I'd work my face off. I'd come home in the evening time and my wife would be there with my children at the front door, smiling and laughing and cheering daddy as he comes home. And my wife would have dinner prepared and the kids would show me their, the artwork, the things that they did with their mother. And it was, it was a nice, wholesome existence. Uh, a lot of people today, this is becoming more and more, uh, especially Pat, since 2020, the pandemic, a lot of people are considering this and this is becoming more prevalent. But at the time it was like, oh, I was absolutely, we were definitely trailblazers. It was brand new. There weren't many people doing that. And there weren't many people that were supporting that kind of lifestyle. It was just mostly like hippies, right? And you know me, I've got a little bit of a hippie streak in me. So uh, we did the crunchy hippie thing and kept their kids home. My wife was barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen cooking. And it had nothing to do with misogyny. <laughs> it had nothing to do with uh, oppressing my wife. It had nothing to do with uh, reducing her to a mere wife and mother. It had everything to do with making a values judgment on what we thought was important for our family. And that was not to outsource the caretaking and education to strangers. We would have to struggle and it was definitely a struggle until, let me tell you, man, it was like, it was crazy. I was learning about internet marketing and I was, uh, you know, out of the gym, I was selling some workouts, right? I had a football workout program. I had a, I had something called lean hybrid muscle and I was, uh, and I, and I sold a, a, a natural, like a, like a natural living product called, um, it was an ebook called unleash your primal edge, right? It was about being a primal man in a modern age. And so I was actively trying to sell eBooks and courses and products back in 2000. Now this is like 2007, 2008 online. And although they, it was working out kind of well, I was paying off my bills. We were still like $90,000 in debt and we were, you know, it was tough. We were a young couple. Everything turned around. Everything changed. My whole life did a, did a 180 when YouTube came out. When YouTube came out, I realized that I could sell more of my products by making videos and putting a link in the description. Like I know today that sounds like, oh, big deal, Elliot. Everybody does that, right? But it was sort of pioneering at the time. YouTube had literally just come out in 2007. I'm here making videos trying to get people to come to my gym and it's working. My friends and Clients were sharing the videos and people were coming to my gym and uh, I had come across this idea of creating digital products and I'd sell the digital products and I'd make enough money just to put food on the table and to cover our expenses until a really cool thing happened. You guys might remember the Hodge twins. Hodge twins uh, reached out to me, right? We were part of the, uh, 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 a syndicate or a network, like an email network. And they said, hey, Elliot, why don't, why don't you uh, become a YouTube partner? I was like, oh, what's the big deal? Why would I want to put a YouTube partner and like put advertising on my videos and, you know, earning pennies per click? I was like, oh, that's silly. You know, I'm over here earning like, you know, $5,000 a month selling my eBooks. Why would I, why would I want to mess with that? Uh, but I took the challenge. Uh, Keith Hodge said, hey, Elliot, just turn on, just become a YouTube partner and hit me up in a couple weeks and tell me what happens. Well, I became a YouTube partner. I turned on the ads and my first paycheck was $18,000 if I remember correctly. And shortly thereafter, it just bumped up to, you know, 20, 25, 30, 35,000 dollars. I think my high, I think my highest grossing YouTube revenue month in was 2013. I think it was like August, 2013. And I had earned about $38,000. And you could only imagine that that totally changed my life. That was when most of you guys found me and found me and my YouTube videos became uh, popular. Uh, Thank you is really what I want to say in this video. You know, this is just an acknowledgement of the fact that like the internet slash YouTube was a brand new invention at the time. Uh, it, it landed in my life at the perfect time and I rode the wave and I was able to make a great living, uh, become who I am in the eyes of many others. It's just a coach and someone who supports you in becoming the strongest version of yourself. And I couldn't have done it without you guys either. So thank you. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, you guys. And thank you, God, for you know, putting me in the world at this time, this place, in order to have this experience. Done.